right. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben. Thanks for coming and braving the uh, fun snow sleet weather. Uh, we're going to do flow analysis and network hunting today. Uh, can everyone hear me okay in the room? Projection works. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, is everyone logged in on the workstations okay? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so, first off, we just, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we want to thank David Wilbur and Willie Cooper Sannon for helping us with content review and the initial outlines of this course. So, next slide. Uh, I'm Ben. I have a pretty eclectic set of interests, uh, technical wise. I like malware, reverse engineering, uh, network sensing. Um, I also like self defense and race car classes. Uh, over here is Mike. Mike just got engaged. Um, and, yeah, Mike, what do you like? No, so I've been here about two years. Um, I do a lot of NetFlow work, uh, other network security stuff too. Um, largely for the sponsor, but also I work on some internal layer stuff. Um, talk a little bit more about that later. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I'll be covering a lot of the intro things, and Mike will be covering more of the uh, advanced analytics later in the day. Um, so next slide. Um, so we kind of want to know about you here. Um, for the public release, this will probably be edited out by Zeno. Um, so we want to know, why do you take this class? Do you have any prior experience with NetFlow? And how do you think you'll be using this as well? So about the class, we'll be covering a variety of things here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Net, NetFlow data, the tools, we'll have two types of uh, traffic we'll be looking at. One is um, from, the other is from the IPOC data, the West Point um, cyber hacking competition. There's a lot of very noisy traffic in that. Um, we'll also be covering analytic tradecraft, situational awareness, and hunting analytics. That's the title. All right. So for those who haven't or are not particularly familiar, need a refresher. Um, this is your important things of uh, packet capture. The pink highlighted boxes is what we care about for the NetFlow. And that's primarily your source IP, your destination IP what protocol it is, GCP, UDP, ICMP, flags, which we'll get to, and total length. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with PCAP, only worry about these pink boxes, and we'll get into these, what, what these mean. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of TCP, um, you have primarily your source port and destination ports, and these flags, which are important for that flow. Uh, urgent, act, push, reset, send, bin. Um, TCP, and again, it'll do retransmission if you aren't familiar with it in case uh, something is not sent properly or there's disruption. Next slide, please. UDP is more of a, a good analogy. We kind of throw a bunch of glitter at something. And just It doesn't matter if it gets there or not. It reaches, you send a bunch of it. And that, this note that we don't have any flags, we just have our source port and our destination port. Next slide, please. So what's NetFlow? So NetFlow is all those pink boxes we looked at, just that. Everything else is cut out. And the nice thing about NetFlow is it's much, much, much smaller than PCAP data. So I think some of the competition data that I converted um, was pretty big, about 80 gigs. And I got down about 300 megs or so, just NetFlow. Um, note this is binary. Um, if you transfer it to ASCII to pump it into any kind of log consolidation tool, it is going to get bigger. But for all the tools in class, you're going to be doing with the binary files. So next slide, please. So NetFlow is PCAP light. Uh, all you do is you're essentially just yanking out most of this payload information, and you just end up with these headers. So the final thing is you have your source IP, your desk, destination IP, who's talking to who, who started, who's receiving, your source port, your destination port, the protocol. Primarily here, you're going to be looking at TCP and UDP. There might be some IACMP and some other weird protocols. But for 99% of the classwork, we're dealing with those two. Any flags we look at, which we'll come into later when we start looking at IDS evasion techniques, time info, byte info, packet info, and ICMP info. Next slide, please. So, key thing, if you need to know what actually is being sent, the, the actual application, what website they're going to, um, you're not going to get that with NetFlow. You still will need PCAP. NetFlow is your phone bill analogy. You can see who's talking to who, the duration, 
but you can't see the actual content of that conversation. Um, however, it is wonderful for doing quick network triage and looking for initial indicators of interest. So, here's the NetFlow version that we care about. There's a fair amount, but we're really going to be only looking at version 5 and version 10. Uh, if you're curious about the unique details, everyone, Wikipedia has really nice entries on them. Um, you'll be hearing the words IP fix frequently here. Um, that's what we'll be working with primarily. So, basic TCP connection. We have 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.2. So, this is your traditional TCP handshake, if you're familiar with it. One machine says sync, the other one acknowledges it, sync act. Original machine responds to that one. Some wonderful data gets sent over. More data gets sent back. So today I want to close the connection with the pin. There's acknowledgement and final knowledge. So that's your basic TCP kind of handshake. So you have your handshake, the data, and then how it ends. Is there any questions on that? Everyone feel kind of comfortable or you're unfamiliar with this? Okay. Thumbs up. All right. Next slide. So there's two types of flavors of NetFlow. Um, it's Uniflow and Biflow. So Uniflow is, you're going to see that NetFlow perspective on a per device basis. So in the example we just shown, the first one's Uniflow. So that first machine, the one on the left, that's the flow for its perspective. And the machine on the right is the other perspective. So you'll see um, your source address, the port start on, where it's going, um, timestamp information, number of bytes sent. The other type is by flow, where that communication between two machines, that's expressed only as one flow. So you'll see things such as this arrow indicator uh, for certain applications. You'll see that, okay, it's going from this machine to this machine. And notice that it has all the um, total byte information. We have a little question on the bottom that says, why don't size listed match up with the amount of data transferred? Can anyone answer that question? The sum of the two transactions up there. Yeah. Mike, is that? Yeah, so it is the sum of the two transactions. Um, also, when you're looking at sizes in NetFlow, it's including the uh, packet headers. So it's not just the payload content, but also the headers are included in the size. So, okay. so, don't count. Yeah, so don't freak out if you see that. Uh, next slide, please. I have a question. That arrow that was in the uh, by flow, does that indicate who originated the? Yeah, so you'll see it on a couple of different tools. I think Argos does that. I think Bro does that. Silk is a. Um, Silk's Uniflow. Yeah, Silk's Uniflow. Um, I'll talk about that when we get to each tool. Because uh, some of the other tools, they do their flags differently. Um, and that'll be one of the little nuances we'll look at. <coughs> Next slide. Cool. So, our architecture discussion. So here's a um, you know, very simplified topology here. You have your router, your internet, and your LAN information. So you can get NetFlow in a variety of ways. The simplest way uh, that we don't particularly advocate here is you can do it on your router. Um, and basically, a router will, will pipe out a uh, NetFlow file out. The other way you can do it is you can do uh, packet capture anywhere around here <laughs> to some box that's going to hold all your PCAP. And then on that box, you then convert it to NetFlow with these tools using the offline analysis syntax. Then from there, you can then take that NetFlow file, pump it out to an analyst <coughs> station, pump it out to AppView, or any kind of log consolidation tool like Splunk, and go from there. The other nice thing, if you do your PCAP and then converting the flow in the same box, you can make sure all your timestamps are the same things of that nature. And or if you want to later go back and kind of follow um, and some unusual behavior you want to look at, you'll have the PCAPs there as well. Question? So, why don't you recommend um, getting it from the router, right? Um, a few things. I think, what, that's two or three slides in, right? Um, yeah, a few reasons. One would be you might be limited to what NetFlow formats you can export to. If you just get PCAP, you can export to any number of tools. So if you want, if you like Argos, if you like Bro, if you like Silk, it gives you that flexibility. Additionally, there's hardware considerations you should be aware of. Can your router handle that? Um, that question. 
Uh, next slide. So where are sensors deployed largely? Uh, there is hardware limitations, like I just mentioned. Bandwidth of the link being monitored, straight collection versus pushing analytics forward. That's the question is, do you want to do the actual processing on that machine where you're storing all the DCAP and NetFlow files, or do you want to push that somewhere else? Bandwidth back to the centralized process of storage. And passive standalone sensor versus getting that flow up routers argument we just kind of talked about. Next slide, please. So now we talk about perimeter visibility and the different ways how you can see this information on your network. Your kind of bread and butter tap is right before your firewall. And this would get all the information of machines going out to the internet and back. Uh, anything your firewall did not stop. So one approach would be you do a tap here, you get your PCAP data, and then you convert to NetFlow, and then you can do your analytic tools from there. However, you can't see any lateral movement from this machine to this machine. So next slide. And that's where enclave level visibility comes in. So say I want to send Drew uh, a communicator IM of a video of puppies playing or something, right? That's not going to go out to the internet. That's going to be a local connection here. Or if I want to do Samba file sharing, for example, that's going to be from machine to machine. So if you were to tap up here, you won't see any of that. So what you can do is you can do um, spanning ports if you have uh, smart switches. And then from there, you can grab PCAP off your switches, convert that to NetFlow, and then add all the tools. And the nice thing about that is you can see all these inner communications as well. The next slide. So Hostflow. Hostflow was developed by a good friend and colleague of mine, Joe Mansour, giving a little shout out there. Uh, it's a MITRE developed tool. It collects NetFlow-like data from the host itself. It's a little client that actually runs on Windows Host right now. Uh, it requires the agent on it, so you can put it on something like a VoIP phone or something of that nature. And it bridges the gap between that network and host. It allows visibility when deploying network sensors at the access layer and uh, when the access layer is cost prohibitive. So next slide. Oh, I just want to point out that so we developed this tool at MITRE. Uh, it's also it's the same concept has been developed other places as well. There's a couple of open source versions of this kind of tool. Um, so there are other options. So one thing that this type of tool gives you that NetFlow doesn't is the linkage of the flow to the process, which is its most valuable feature. Yep. So Drew said that the, the nice thing about NetFlow or host flow is it gives you Additional information of the process that what started that flow? Or the yes. Exactly. So whether what IE started, Firefox started it, um, and the user as well. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Drew. Oh, you get any questions or comments, feel free to shout them out. Okay, next slide. So this is what the post flow looks like. So after all your clients here, to an analytics box or wherever you're doing all your central repository storage. I'd just like to add that right here, if you like not your Windows clients, make sure Linux clients just case you're not going to get port phones, you're not going to get uh, credit, or you're not going to get other embedded devices. So, uh, you know, it, it, partway there, it's not as great as fully censoring, um, you know, by the switch layer. Yeah. So in the event your switches can't handle, you know, copying all their traffic from a stand port, or you don't have the ability to do that, this is one advantage. Yeah. What's the performance here on the post being monitored? Um, I don't think it's too bad. What, what are they yeah. using? Uh, is it? Um, we're running in production now. It doesn't have a huge user um, so there's a little bit of performance. But, um, yeah, I think it has to be do more with what T sharks, memory leaks, than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the exact number. Very minor. And next slide. So, Mike, do you want to talk about flow sampling? Sure. So this isn't in your uh, credit notes. If you're looking at those, uh, I thought about adding this after we sent this to credit. Um, so, routers do flow sampling oftentimes, um, and, and when I say flow sampling, I mean out of every n packets, they pick one and, and convert them to that to net flow. Um, it's fine for net ops if you're worried about performance, sort of what's running on your network, and you know, is the network down? Uh, but it doesn't really help for security. Because uh, you're missing a lot of data. Um, so we're talking about censoring at the enclave, right? At the switch level, level, or even use a host flow. Um, that produces a lot of network traffic. Even when you can the net flow, it's still quite a bit of traffic. Um, 
And depending on exactly what kind of analytics you want to do, you might be able to further condense that down by aggregating or sampling. Um, and this is particularly important if you're at a, a geographically diverse enterprise, so you've got a site here and a site there, and you can send all your data back to one central place to do analytics. Um, do you want to aggregate your data now so you can send it back? Uh, so what are some ways you might be able to sample NetFlow? Um, beyond just uh, sampling tactics, creating them. Well, what are some other ways you can sample or aggregate or otherwise condense them? Well, no, it's early. Anybody have any ideas? No? Okay. So here's some things I came up with. Um, yeah, this is going to depend on exactly on what analytics you have, what questions you're trying to answer. Um, some options. You can collect only from end hosts and a given subnet, for instance. Uh, maybe only your end and port host, your high value targets, or whatever. Um, you can also collect only for limited periods of time. Um, so, sampling packs to create flows, you can sample the flows themselves. So, you create all the flows and then only send back uh, one out of every end. Um, if there are things you just aren't going to care about, like you don't want to see the SMTP track to your mail server, maybe you just ignore that. Don't send that back. Um, Collect only for ports of interest. So, if you're particularly interested, say, uh, in lateral movement and you want to look at the, uh, the Windows protocols, then BIOS and SMB, maybe you just collect that traffic to ignore everything else. Um, if you've got uh, a NetFlow sensor, a higher layer in the network, maybe you only collect down for, for client, client traffic uh, or you know, otherwise traffic you're not going to see with your, your other NetFlow sensors. Um, maybe you only report on new SIP. As port or different e port pairs um, that you haven't seen previously, so you only want to see new traffic. I can see it in the host as possible, somebody new. You can aggregate in the larger time span. So I saw an X flows that contained Y bytes and Z duration from this host to this host you know, yesterday. Um, again, it's going to depend on what question you're trying to answer, what approach you take. Um, but you know, uh, one of the arguments we hear to, well, I can't censor in the switch layer. Uh, or I can't censor my entire enterprise, it's too much traffic. That's certainly an argument, but there's some intelligent things you can do uh, to help deal with this. How dare you that there's too much traffic to collect or too much traffic to add? Oh, okay. um, the, the argument I hear from my sponsors is too much traffic to analyze and to shuffle around our geographically distributed enterprise. Um, so this, that's sort of where this inspiration uh, came from. Next slide. All right. Fun stuff. Tool time. Do you remember home improvement? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at a few tools. Uh, next slide, please. So Yap, Silk, iSilk, Argos, and Bro. And like I said earlier, lab data is supplied from the iTalk competition. And you're, there's fun port scanning, malware, C2C behavior, SMTP, HTTP, FTP, SSH. Uh, NSA Red Team was the bad guys for it which is fun. Uh, next slide. So here's kind of like a high level overview of what we'll be looking at today and the kind of the pros and cons of every tool here. Yeah, this is nice because it has the ability to do deep packet inspection. POF, which is a passive OS fingerprinting, so it actually examines network traffic based on how certain machines respond to HTTP requests or any number of things. It can a fairly accurate fingerprint of what machines are on the network just by you know, Discrete view. Silk, can I just add uh, yeah. the app API stuff? Uh, so we'll actually go into the, the packet to pull up metadata. So things like your DNS request and response, HTTP headers, user agent strings. User agent strings, but it's still metadata, but it's a much richer set of metadata yeah. than your standard five level flow. That's a great pro for the app. But. Silk, uh, I really like Silk. I think it has some of the best documentation on it, uh, analyst documentation. And the file stay in binary and very, very tiny, which is great. iSilk will be doing that as well. It's a very nice GUI front end for Silk. And what's useful about it is it gives you the actual command line or terminal commands that it's rendering all this with. So when I was first learning it, I used a combination of Silk and iSilk. So if I didn't know how to do something in Silk, I'd use iSilk, I see the thing, and then or the command it used, I'd pipe it in. Argos, uh, it's a really nice, simple server client install process. There's many third-party tools that use it. Any modern Linux distro should have a package for it. 
Yeah, and so we're going to have to compile from source, and the directions for silk is pretty good. Yeah, and iSilk is the directions could really be improved on. And then lastly, there's Bro. And Bro is an interesting, it's kind of like a hybrid IDS NetFlow piece. So. And it has this beautiful thing called the Bro Weird log, which is useful for picking up on strange evasion or indications that there's serious misconfigurations on your network. 